Uh, so what do you got? The defense. How does it look to you going into Pac-12 play? Um, what improvements need to be made? It seems like there have been improvements over the yeah. last few weeks. Exponential improvements. <laughs> we, uh, you know, we've improved immensely defensively in the month of January. So um, I would say it starts with our pick and roll coverage, which is, you know, 70% of college basketball right now is do your, your pick and roll defense. If you're bad at it, uh, the other team's going to continue to do it. And uh, most teams nowadays, it's, you know, the number one part of everybody's offensive package. So I think we've improved immensely there. Also, our deflection totals are way up. Uh, we're averaging, for a team that we don't press much, uh, we're averaging almost 40 deflections a game. Statistics will tell you if you get 40 deflections, uh, you're going to win 95% of your games. So uh, we're way up in that area. So I think that uh, the last piece, though, I will tell you is, you know me, I'm always trying to what we can get better at, the defensive rebounding. You know, we've got to improve on the defensive backboard. Uh, it'll lead to our, uh, our break, which is the best thing we do on offense. Um, the numbers analytically tell tell that we you know our breakout you know what we are in the break what we are when we run this that whatever um, paint touches but when we're on the break our this, this is by far the best team I've ever had on the fast break probably because we got guys can pass and finish and we're more athletic um, and the way to get back on the break more you probably can't steal it much more than we're stealing it I mean we get a pretty high steal team so the, the, the you got to rebound it better. So, uh, you know, that's what – the, the defensive backboard is so important to your fast break. So that's just an area where we have to improve um, and we can improve. Now, when you do get in passing lanes and you're aggressive defensively, you tend not to have a tight umbrella to be a great defensive rebounding team because you are spread out with your aggressiveness on the defensive end. So it's harder to be a great defensive rebounding team when you're a steel deflection team. But we can't. It's just we, we don't block out the way we need to block out. So um, got to have block out drills where nobody gets hurt in practice. That's the, that's the trick in basketball. But that would, that, that's, that would be my assessment that we got to – that's, that's an area where we can get a lot better defensive backboard. That will change – you know, that could take us to a whole other level. What are your thoughts on the offensive rebounding? Um, I think we've improved in December. Uh, you know, I still think that uh, Adem, Kenny, Mac, they, they, you know, last few games we get much more production out of the five spot. And uh, Jalen Clark getting him more to the offensive glass. I think Will is going to help us. Abramo is going to help us there. Um, it's an area where I would say that we can improve the most on offense because we, we uh, passed the ball pretty well, we're that, we've executed pretty well, our efficiency is top five in the country. But at times we tend to rely on that and every shot's not going in. Sometimes uh, we uh, tend to think it is. So we, uh, I would say uh, both those areas are areas where we can improve for sure. Um, as far as just the way this team has been able to play with leads lately, um, you know, especially coming off of what happened in Vegas uh, and how the response was against a team like Kentucky, uh, what's the hardest thing about getting a team to understand about playing with a lead and, and you know, improving in that area as the season goes on? Well, we're about to head out on the road, and first of all, um, you know, I'm a little concerned we really we haven't had a comeback victory yet because you're going to have to have those in, in your season. Um, your question about playing with the lead, um, you know, my experience tells me that uh, leads of single digits either disappear or they go to double digits. And you, uh, you, need, to, you, you need to try to push it out because teams are going to make a run. You know, the Maryland game's an anomaly. Uh, Kentucky game's reality. You know, they, 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 they got NBA players that wouldn't award winner. I mean, they're going to come back. You know, so you're going to have to be able to deal with that. Um, we're a tough team to come back on because we don't turn the ball over, uh, which is why it was so hard to see against Illinois. Um, 
But uh, and we got some veteran guys. You know, it's a huge advantage as a coach. You know it when you have it. You know it when you don't have it. Um, so uh, I would say, though, to go back to my first thing, uh, at some point we're going to have to come back. Now, we got, you know, a lot of guys, you know, five guys in there played on the Final Four team, been around here. They've, they've had comeback victories before. But we haven't had one this year. And uh, we're going to have to have one for sure here in the next few months in Pac-12 play. I mean, it's just not all all going to go your way the whole time. So, um, But it's all part of the process. Just uh, looking forward to getting back, uh, getting back started. The way David Singleton has been playing, have you considered uh, starting him, or do you like the spark he brings off the bench? Well, it's a huge luxury um, to sub to strength. Very huge luxury. Um, you know, Amari Bailey's a you know, future NBA player. Um, so it's really, you know, it doesn't really matter. Either way, I think um, you know the, David's the kind of guy that you know this doesn't bother him. You know, I say I don't know. Um, I had dinner with John Rothstein in New York. I think you know I, he has all these awards. You follow it more than me. I don't know, but he was thinking David could be Sixth Man of the Year. I, I did you know I think that's an NBA award. I didn't know if they had that in college, but I guess he gives out those awards. So um, you know maybe we don't want to mess up David winning. Uh, John Rothstein's. I don't know what David what, what he would get for that if he was to win Jr's award, but uh, you know that it, it's it's a luxury having uh, a, a starter that doesn't start. You know, one of the better players in the Pac-12 that doesn't start. A huge luxury, hmm. and and it's an unbelievable attitude about it. What have you seen out of Washington State? What stands out immediately about them? Um. You know, they always, the, the, Kyle's an analytics guy, so uh, they were giving up, teams were shooting 28% from the three against them until Utah State made every shot. And some of them were really hard shots, well defended shots. So I think they, they, their, their numbers crept over 30 after that game. So they've always shot the three, defended the three. That's always, uh, you know, make them but don't give them up. It's always, you know, been a part of Kyle's. Uh, Routine that, and the fact he likes red tractants in Del Mar, but uh, um, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know if you guys have been there. The prime rib special is pretty good, but anyway, um, Kyle um, has had to replace his backcourt. Big, you know, it's tough when you have you have new guards. So Bamba's stepped up into a much more of a productive role. I think he's leading them in almost every category. Um, this year, you know, but losing Roberts from Flowers, they had the ball most of the time. They've had to change. They're much more of a pick and roll team, um, similar to St. Mary's when he, you know, the whole, you know, their, their coaching tree. Um, now they're trying to play through Muhammad Gee a lot in the high post, and because uh, he can shoot it, he can pass it. He's a very skilled guy. So uh, they've they've tried to change. They've had, I think, they've had to change their offense a little bit. Uh, be less pick and roll, be more play, uh, you know, playing through Muhammad Gee on some of the things they do. So it's been an adjustment, and uh, they've had to add some transfers into the mix, uh, Justin Powell being one, um, you know, at the guard position. So uh, different team offensively. I mean, that's what I would, you know, still the analytics and the way, you know, the things he believes in. Um, they rebound the ball well. My concern back to the defensive backboard for this game. Um, you know, Rodman goes, Bomba goes. You know, teams that rebound the ball well, they don't. It's not usually their big men. All big men tend to go. It's just their their other guys go. So that's a concern, but uh, definitely different without the true point guard in the pick and roll. He's been one of the top rebounders in the uh, conference. You know, what problems does he bring to you guys? Well, he can score. He can pass. He rebounds. You know, he's a legitimate seven-footer, I think. Um, I don't think he played against us last year, so um, with the injuries, either time we played. Um, now, maybe he did play here, but he didn't play in the conference tournament for sure. Um, but he's a skilled guy. He can make shots, very comfortable at 15 feet, shooting and passing. So they play through him in a high post a lot. Um, and, you know, he posts a little bit off the block, but he's got good ball skills, so he can dribble himself into a shot. Um, you know, he struggled with foul trouble at times um, because they, they run at shooters, which, you know, 
when they do that, people drive to the rim and he's the guy waiting on them. So, um, but he's evolved. He's definitely taken a, you know, the next step as a player, which, you know, that's what guys do when they stay in school. They get better every year. So he's definitely improved. Uh, Max Rist, how, how's it doing? Are you expecting him to be full? Yeah, he, he had a, you know, we just wanted to, I figured if he didn't play, it would give him like a five, you know, four or five day rest where um, he didn't take a hit on it. He's got a, it, a, a technical thing with his wrist that's going to bother him the rest of the year. But, uh, you know, needing him for Pac-12 play, it was a chance to get him a respite. Uh, and uh, there's no, no need to aggravate it when we, you know, in a game we had, we had won. So, uh, but he's had a great week uh, up to, you know, well, we've been back a couple of days. So he's had a great couple of days of practice. So I think the time off definitely helped him. All good? All right. Thank you.